Hey, Elizabeth speaking here. We are now in the third part of this course, uh, and we, today we will discuss system design. This is the basic system that we have discussed earlier, a very simple system, but still you can find it in practical applications. You can think about where you can find a system like this, where you start uh, moving this piston to the right, the oil from this chamber is pu pushed over to this chamber, and this piston starts to move to the right. And as soon as we have a external load opposite this direction, we will have a pressure built up and in both cylinders and we have to apply an external um, force here if we want to continue the motion. This is another system where we have changed the first cylinder to a rotational machine, a pump, an ordinary pump, and we show that uh, sometimes we, we draw the, the electrical motor here as well, but, but in this case we, we only show that we start rotate this shaft and this will imply that we have fluid going in this pipe over to the cylinder. And if there's an external load here, there will be a pressure built up that goes in the opposite direction. So we need an external torque here to, in order to be able to, to overcome that external load. If the cylinder, or when the piston reach the, the end position, the pressure rise in this chamber, the pressure will continue to rise in this chamber due to, to that we still have flow going in this direction, but as soon as the pressure is high enough, the pressure relief valve will open, and instead we have fluid from the pump through the pressure relief valve and back to the tank again. And then it goes just in a circle. So in like this. We may, may also have a transmission with a rotational pump and an hydraulic motor. When we start the rotation of the pump shaft, the fluid goes over to the motor side, it starts to rotate, and if we have an external torque opposite the, the rotational direction, we will have a pressure rise and we need to put a required, we need a, a required torque uh, on the pump, pump shaft to keep up the, the flow and keep up the rotation. But if the torque, external torque, is too high, the pressure relief valve may open and in this will stop, this rotation will stop and we have the fluid just going from the pump through the pressure relief valve and back to tank. Uh, this is another similar system that I copied from the internet. You have a motor, electrical motor, you have a pump, you have a pressure relief valve, you have a filter, you have a restrictor, you have a directional valve, and you have a motor, which can rotate in both directions. And this valve here is in fact not really correct drawn, but you can imagine that the, the, uh, this symbol is, can be moved up and down, so you can see 
what happened in the different positions of the directional valve. In this posi position, the fluid from the pump goes through the motor and back through the filter to the tank. And in the, uh, the central position, the fluid from the pump goes only through the valve and directly to the tank. And to, uh, at the same time as the, both the pipes from the motor are blocked. So you can, you can study this system for a while and see, stop the, the video and see if you can understand the components and the function of the whole system. This is another system that you can study for a few minutes. And here you have a pump. Close to the pump you have a pressure relief valve. You have a directional valve and you have two cylinders. And you have an extra device here so that if you activate the left part of this directional valve, the fluid goes through, uh, through the valve to the, this chamber of the first cylinder, but you have also some of the fluid that can take this way, goes to the pressure relief valve. If you have low pressure, you have a block here, and uh, this pipe blocked here, and it, you also have it blocked here. So for low pressures, the fluid goes to this chamber, this piston starts to move to the right, and the fluid from the right-hand side chamber goes back through the directional valve and back to the tank. If you have, if this, or as soon as this piston has reached the end position, the pressure will rise, and then if it's high enough, this pressure relief valve will open, and you have the flow through that valve, and it fills this chamber. This piston starts to move to the right, and the fluid from, from the right hand side here goes back to the tank. Uh, give it a minute or two and think about what will happen if we instead put the directional valve in the, or activate the, this part, activate the part to the left, go from the normal position uh, to the right and see what will happen. The fluid will come from the pump, cross over the valve and go in this direction. We can discuss in the classroom what will happen, happen then. You will also have an exercise to do. Try to make a drawing where two cylinders have uh, work in a serial motion, but you should use cylinders that are only activated, hydraulic activated in one direction. The piston rod is one-sided. So they are a little bit simpler than in the previous picture. The cylinders are a little bit simpler than what you can see in this picture. Ty try to make a drawing of that. That's the exercise to deal with from this part. Thank you.